Red vs. Blue Season 17 Episode 1 A Stitch in Time has officially released, so let me break it down for you. So things open up to a very familiar series of events, although things aren't like how they played out prior as Gankins is now in the place of church and events seem to be changing. We then get a scene where Gankins returns to Krovos and he tells him that his job isn't done. Donut is also there where we get the plot of the season. So Donut was capable of imprisoning Krovos last season with the hammer, but Krovos seeking to get out of his cell only has one way of doing it, shattering time and creating as many paradoxes as possible. Each new paradox is a different crack in his cell until he is free from its containment. Gankins' role is to not actually take the place of the characters, rather inhabit them to change time. And Donut is also presumably capable of doing this, as he also travels through time to fix what is being changed. I thought this was a really good setup and execution of delivering us the plot. I actually really love the portrayal of how the time travel is branching into different directions giving that cracking of glass look on Krovos' cell. Like you have the main line which is just a solid line, but crack it and form branching paths from any moment within there and it only grows. So I really love the visual representation of how that's being done even in the title screen cracking and forming a solid line. I thought that was really clever. Also, the reason for delivering it made sense. The reason Krovos tells Donut this isn't because he's caught a case of the villain monologuing syndrome. Rather, it's because he wants Donut to travel back in time because it'll only create more paradoxes, thus increasing the rate in which he can achieve freedom. Last season with Gankins was the exact opposite. Gankins literally pulls Griff aside just so he can explain the plot. Nothing else, he just does it because monologues. So I like that there is a reason to explain. In terms of Krovos, he's taken the form of some new character. Obviously, we know nothing about who exactly this is just yet, but I felt the need to mention it just for the sake of it. She is voiced by Lee Eddy, who, if you're not aware, was the voice of 479er in Project Freelancer. Everyone loves her, everyone wants to know what happened to her. She's one of the few associates of Project Freelancer, we have no idea what happened to them. But you've never been able to assume these things in Red vs. Blue. You know, I've said this before, but Sarge and Doc aren't the same, Lopez, Church, and Vic aren't. So, is this 479er? It could be, but I wouldn't hold your breath just solely based on the voice actor. In concept alone, personally, wouldn't be a fan of that, but we'll see what happens. Now one thing I want to bring up, just in case you didn't know, because it wasn't in my video where I talked about the Season 17 information, this came out after the fact. So just in case you're unaware, Jason Waite is the sole writer for this season. Joe Nicolosi isn't writing as he's gotten tasked for other projects. So if you don't know who he is, he solely wrote Season 15, he and Jason co-wrote Season 16, but now Jason is finishing Joe's arc. So, just some quick info. Anyway, in terms of the episode, how did it do? Honestly, I thought it was incredibly solid. The comedy landed a lot more times than it didn't. There were some genuinely funny moments this episode that felt great. It felt like the comedy was being driven by the characters and their personality as opposed to the jokes that they were telling. Season 16, in my opinion, made the mistake of thinking random equals funny, as well as it just told a lot of jokes. Here there were a lot of moments where there was just a smile on my face because it was good and it was familiar, and hopefully the rest of the season is capable of capturing that feeling. In terms of how this season is going to handle things, the way I see it is that it's playing it very safe. It seems like a very smart and non-risky season. By that I mean, from what I gather, this season is very heavily going to rely on nostalgia. Not just referencing past things, but actually going back and visiting those moments and fucking with them. But the reason, in my opinion, I think it is going to go over well with the audience is because it's not actually changing anything. Well, it is and it isn't. The whole premise of the season is, of course, they are changing the events. But I don't believe that anyone actually thinks by the time this season is over, the lore as we know it will have whole new retcons that just wipe away huge chunks of the plot. No, I'm sure by the end of it everything will go back to normal. But what this season is allowing itself to do is rely on nostalgia so fans can think, Oh, this moment. I really liked it. But then throw in some random twist for entertainment. No one's gonna get mad thinking, Oh my god, I can't believe they just retconned and now he's dead? No, it's its own separate reality that people are going to get a kick out of. 
you know what it reminds me of and i honestly wouldn't be shocked if they implement this because it fits so well with the premise the season 5 episode 100 alternate endings there were a ton of endings released that usually resulted in everyone dying but they weren't canon they were just a thing that existed for the sake of comedy and to add to that that was the first time jenkins made an appearance it was in those alternate endings honestly still uncertain if jenkins and gankins are the same person perhaps time will tell but this season really reminds me of those bits. Something else this season has done, in my opinion, differing from the previous two, is setting the tone for this season as comedic. As I said earlier, season 16 set up ridiculous over the top, which it ended up being. And as for season 15, it made the mistake of not sticking to its serious, more dramatic tone that it set up. If you remember, they fucking murder tons of people in a more brutal way. And a lot of people were on board for that. But then when specifically Temple turns into some cowardice wuss, it's just like, this wasn't what I was expecting. It just wanted to do funny when it set up serious. But here, this episode has set up comedy. It's saying, hey, this season is going to be more funny than anything, which is perfectly fine to do, so long as it can do it. And so if there is going to be more dramatic events in the story, we're not necessarily going to be expecting it, which typically goes over better. Like I was saying earlier, this season has given itself a very large safety net for its comedic outlets. What this season really has to worry about is, how does it handle the main narrative? Sure, we could jump to all these recognizable moments, but at the end of the day, it is the story about Krovo's Donut and Genkins and how it resolves itself. Donut, in what I would assume all of his iterations, don't seem to be affected, and I'm sure as time goes on, others won't be either. So honestly, I thought this episode was very solid, very funny. I am excited to see what Jason does with this season. Hopefully the Shizno Paradox is capable of going out on a high note.